Hey, just a couple of quick reminders. Coming up in uh, 25 minutes or so, we're going to be joined by Russell Singleton. He's a physician assistant working for Dr. Jonathan Tripp at Tripp Family Medicine. That'll be between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning. Also coming up a little later in the program, I believe we have a visitor from City Hall in Twin Falls. I'm not sure who's up next in the rotation. Uh, We're just going to catch up on a few things that are going on around the city uh, during a course of about 10 or 15 minutes following 9 o'clock news a little later this morning. In the meantime, I want to thank you for joining me. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Seven minutes after 8 o'clock, we're up to 48. Now, according to my cell phone, we're at 42. And I noticed uh, when you take the temperature around Twin Falls or you, you check out various websites in the morning, you don't often get a consensus. So people must be measuring in many different parts of the neighborhood, if you will. And, and I'll, I'll point out that probably where you happen to be this morning, it could be anywhere from upper 30s to uh, to upper 40s, just depending on maybe a little wind direction, although there's not, not a lot of that going on today. Speaking of which way the wind is blowing, there is a wind blowing out of Europe right now that I think is very similar to what we're experiencing on the local level. Uh, the, it's the biggest story in the world right now, and that is the, uh, the the migrant crisis that is currently taking place. And and I say migrant, I don't say refugee. I'm going to explain a little bit about this in a moment. Some of you may be familiar with an English politician by the name of Nigel Farage. And he leads a, a party called United Kingdom Independent Party, known by the acronym UKIP. And during the last parliamentary election in England in May, I guess it was May, his party got one out of five votes that were cast, which was an amazing turnout for his party, which has often been vilified in media and by the elites in England. Well, Great Britain, United Kingdom, been vilified as being a, a nationalist, ethnocentric party. They didn't get many seats in the English Parliament simply because if you get one out of five votes, in, and it was spread evenly across the country because of that, the result is they didn't win many seats. They only had a couple of pickups. But he himself, as the leader of the party, has been serving in the European Parliament as a member from Great Britain for many, many years, developed quite a re- reputation as a straight talker. And in a couple of minutes, I want to share with you some of his comments from yesterday, picked up by the BBC about this current crisis going on and the effort, and yes, there is a convoluted effort going on by certain elites to change the focus away from migrants and refer to these people as refugees. And there's a very subtle reason for that. We'll explain that in just a minute. But before I do that, I came across this today at the Daily Caller. America already has a refugee problem on its hands. A writer by the name of Scott Greer There's the strong possibility that Islamic militants are hiding among the refugee masses. Even our own State Department admits that there is a dangerous lurk or link within the exodus. He says lurk here, uh, but uh, the danger lurks, I guess. But I think there's a link is what he's trying to say. If our country does foolishly bring in these Middle Eastern migrants, the writer says, the federal government's refugee resettlement program will likely handle them, which is a disaster in of itself. The U.S. Refugee Admissions Program, he writes, brings many immigrants here under the pretense that non-government organizations known as NGOs will cover the bill. Shockingly, the bill is usually paid by taxpayers to the tune of billions of dollars. Moreover, the United Nations, not our own government, recommends the vast majority of refugees who will resettle in America. And then he goes on to say, in small towns across the country, places like Twin Falls, Idaho, the public has no say in this. As many of you have already learned, you've discovered that, you've been working on this issue for months, you have absolutely no say in it, and all you get are people closing their ears, closing their eyes, and they're not willing to see you or hear you when you try to speak up about this and share some of these concerns. And he went on to tell the story of what's going on in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where they have had a huge, huge influx of these refugees from from East Africa, the Horn of Africa. There is a part now of Minneapolis, Minnesota that is called Little Mogadishu. He writes, it plays host to violent Somali gangs who have a penchant for child sex trafficking. The neighborhood also has become a prime recruiting area for radical Islam, and as many as former 40 residents, 40, 40, 40, have joined terrorist groups in the Middle East. There was, in fact, a video from this summer, this past summer, a couple months ago, 
that someone actually got. They were interviewing some of these people around the uh, the Somali neighborhoods in Minneapolis, and most of them were saying that they don't support freedom of speech and any number of other liberties that we have in this country, and that they would indeed like to see Sharia law adopted in the United States. Thank you for coming to my country, and thank you for taking my tax money, and now thank you for attacking us. I guess that's the way we could look at this. So I mentioned this fellow, Nigel Farage. A lot of people think he's a great man who who actually are following his speeches and, and his comments and the like, and he, he's developed this reputation as being a very straight talker. Long before Donald Trump ever came on the scene in American politics, Nigel Farage was a guy who was trying to set his countrymen straight. The BBC interrupted its programming yesterday to actually carry a speech by this man, and he was referring to what was going on in his part of the world. He says... When you hear people talk about refugees instead of migrants, they may be, play, uh, may be playing fast and loose with the definition of what a refugee happens to be. You know, when I sat in that meeting yesterday with President Schultz of the European Parliament, he kept using the word refugee. And indeed, in many of the news reports in Britain, I keep hearing the word refugee, albeit interspersed with the word migrant. I think at times we're not quite sure what we're actually talking about. A refugee is, by definition, from the United Nations, an individual with a well-founded fear of persecution, usually for reasons of race, class, religion, or sexual orientation. And I have to say that whilst we focus today on the Syrian problem, actually, most of the people that have come over the course of the last year across the Mediterranean have come from countries like Somalia, Mali, Nigeria, Mauritania, and the vast majority of those that have come have been, and this is unavoidable, have been young males. There you go. And they're not coming as refugees. They are coming as migrants in hopes of taking someone's job or getting on uh, one of the, uh, well, feeding at the trough of the social welfare states in Europe. We have been told that Germany is going to be overwhelmed by 800,000 of these people, but England itself took in 650,000 last year. At some point, these systems can no longer handle this. Mr. Farage, who's pointing out that a lot of these people are, are just simply coming as welfare tourists, will be denounced by media and the elites in his country, but he's making a very valid point. 95% are economic migrants. And I noticed yesterday, the Hungarian MEP and Monet professor and great uh, proponent of all things EU, Shoplat, a very moderate conservative, said that he'd noticed that the migrants that were traveling through Hungary uh, were in many cases wealthier than the people that actually lived in rural Hungary. There you go. So a lot of these people, <laughs> and they didn't want to stay in Hungary. They left. They demanded to go to Germany. Why? Because they looked around Hungary and they thought, well... <laughs> Don't want any part of this peasant lifestyle. And then Farage went on to issue a warning, and it is this. Basically, beware. And there is a further element to this uh, that I think is even more sinister and even more dangerous. When ISIS say they will use the migrant tide to flood Europe with 500,000 of their own jihadists, I think we'd better listen. 500,000 may not be realistic, but what if it's 5,000? What if it's 500? And already, one of the ISIS terrorist suspects who committed the first atrocity um, against holidaymakers in Tunisia has been seen getting off a boat onto Italian soil. At the moment, the European Union's common asylum policy has absolutely no means whatsoever of checking anybody's background. And I would say that we must not allow our compassion to imperil our safety. Nobody, nobody can check backgrounds. That's what he's making clear. And if the European Union can't do it, the United Nations can't do it. It's a feckless organization. Also, if you're wondering, well, what, what, why is this going to be a problem in the United States? There has not been a lot of reporting about this. But the spokesman for President Obama, Josh Ernest, was being questioned yesterday during his daily briefing with reporters. He says the White House plans to take more refugees off Europe's hands and they may not need congressional approval.
there may be some. Uh, there's no specific piece of legislation that we've put forward at this point, uh, but I certainly wouldn't rule out uh, an important role for Congress uh, in terms of putting in place those kinds of policies. And do you have any ideas in terms of what the financial cost of, of these approaches might involve? Uh, at, at this point, what we're focused on is trying to determine what the best set of policies would be. You know, they're looking around and they're saying, well, you know, Idaho, Utah, Nevada, they all look empty. We'll just send more of them there. And you know what? Uh, they'll be on the dole, and therefore they'll vote for more Democrats, right? It's 817. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. This crisis, and, and the elites, especially the media elites, have been hammering away at that image of the boy drowned on the beach in Turkey. Well, a little more detail on that. According to Kerry Pickett at the Daily Caller, the Wall Street Journal has been looking into this. According to the Wall Street Journal, Abdullah Kurdi, the little boy's father, was living in a relatively safe area in a Turkish town for three years while working construction sites. And he was getting a pretty good paycheck, but not as good as his sister was getting. She lives in Canada. So he wanted, and the sister, by the way, claimed that he had been a, he'd been a refugee and only been living in Turkey for a year. However... His Facebook page, yes, he has Facebook. He's not some poor, starving fellow. His Facebook page shows that he and his family often vacationed at various sites around Turkey and even in Europe for the past three years. So no, he'd been living there for three years as a migrant. And get this, he wanted to relocate. His father told him, you know what, we should relocate to Canada with your sister. Because when we get there, think about the great social welfare benefits we'll have. So... He told his son, look, go to Germany, get some dental work done, and then use the excuse that you're a refugee and we'll try and get relocated with your sister in North America. So this fellow, just planning dental work and using that as the ruse to get his foot in the door, loaded his family on a boat, and off they set. The boat capsized. His children and his wife were killed. Now we're being told that it's because of the insensitivity of the Western world, and even all the way down to people who live in the Magic Valley, that this is happening. And if only we would be better human beings and more accepting of these, these, the plight of these terrible refugees. No, this kid's father got him killed because this was the way that they were trying to get into Europe through the back door and therefore then into Canada through the back door because they were looking at the big paycheck they would get from Canadian social services. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Some of your telephone calls coming up, obviously, this morning. Also, a physician assistant, Russell Singleton, will be joining us, well, in about 15 minutes from Trip Family Medicine right here in Twin Falls. He'll take some time out talking with us this morning. I'll tell you what he's going to be talking about in just a couple of minutes. How's that? When Russell Singleton joins us in just a few minutes from Trip Family Medicine, we'll be talking about some just important things about your diet, but those things that, you know, you're often cautioned about, cholesterol, fat, and the, the treatment for some of those things. Now, some of us have, uh, I had a pretty low cholesterol reading the last time I had it tested, but the doctor said, you know what, this medicine will be good for you anyway at your age. <laughs> Don't you always like that, at your age? And he, he prescribed this, he said, because it's got a lot of other benefits as well. And uh, sure enough, I went along with that. But we're going to be talking about that in just a few minutes. And if you have a question or comment about about that, because I think in a lot of cases, uh, rumors get started and the like about some treatments, and, and we like to clear that up. So Jonathan's uh, not going to be with us today, I believe, but instead it will be Russell. And Russell will square all of that away with us coming up in a few minutes. We do this every Wednesday with Trip Family Medicine between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. And what we like to do is encourage you to call in and, and take part in the program as well. And we want to point out that Trip Family Medicine is located on Fillmore Street directly across from the main post office in Twin Falls. And remember, too, life's too short not to feel good. It's 823-49. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We have a caller with us, and you're on the air. Yeah, it's about this boy that drowned. Uh, I was under the impression, at least for some of the information that I've gotten, that it was all staged. His name really isn't what you said it was, and this whole thing is designed to, you know, do what it's doing with the liberal media. And then I say to myself, 
every day there's innocent life being killed, whether or not it's aborted or being the young little girl doing her homework in her home, minding her own business, doing the right thing, who got shot. Uh, you know, were we supposed to see a picture of her laying dead in her bedroom? You know, was that supposed to inspire us to do something? You know, it, it's it's just you get so tired of, of these useful idiots that go along with this perpetuation of this BS. I just, you just get tired of it. You know, you're so tired of the foolishness of this, of, of the people of this world and this country sometimes. And I, even if the kid has a different name and, you know, the backstory is, no matter how you look at it, it was all designed as a public relations maneuver in order to try and bring more of these people into the Western countries. Exactly. And and the thing of it is, is, you know, again, when they're, when they're, they're I'll say the State Department, it, tell me if I'm wrong, and I've said this before on this program, but they will choose 600 Muslim refugees and, and 30 Christian refugees. Uh, what the hell is the point? I just say to myself, are we not supposed to be taking the refugees that are at risk and the ones that are Christian? You know, I don't know. It, 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 it's just craziness. You know, you just get frustrated and mad and hope to hell that you see something changing for the better. I thank you for the call. What we need to do is change people in government because... Once more, we don't have a say in these programs. Why don't we have a say? Because we don't have people in government who are willing to stand up and say enough. And we need a lot of them. Right now, we have too many clowns who just go along to get along. And and a great piece about that at redstate.com from Eric Erickson and about how this is really what we're seeing politically in this country this summer going into this fall is really finally, finally, the overall rejection of that viewpoint. And he goes back to the... Uh, the race in Mississippi a few years ago for the U.S. Senate between Thad Cochran and, uh, was it, McDaniel. And McDaniel had won the primary, but then they had to have a runoff, and then the Republican Party came in and attacked all of the conservatives and the Tea Party groups, and really the people of Main Street, in order so that they could hold on to a powerful seat that they felt could be better abused by their Wall Street handlers. And the Wall Street handlers want these people. I, there's a video out today, and it's from a Canadian talk show host by the name of uh, Stefan Molyneux, and I've watched some of his work before. He's really ruffled some feathers north of the border. But he says all of these people who tell you that it's the compassionate thing to do and bring all of these people into your country, he said the CEOs who are telling you that, they know that these people, mainly illiterate, are not going to compete for that CEO job. So the CEO isn't worried about losing his job. He's just getting cheap labor. The politicians know that these people aren't going to come in and take their jobs. You, you understand how this works. All of the people who say it's the right thing to do as if somehow that they've cornered the market on judgment, they they live behind gated walls and they don't worry about their jobs. But the rest of us, we all have to, and you know, they know that these people, because of the language barrier for the time being, aren't coming in and taking their jobs as newspaper editors. Coming up on 828, we have another caller with us. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. What's on your mind? Uh, good morning, Bill. This is Pat. You know, the rich Arab nations, the oil nations, are not taking any of these people into their countries. And what one must remember, the goal of the Muslims is to have world control. And world control can only happen if they have Muslims in large numbers in all populations of the world. And so they're shipping them into all these nations to slowly take over because they have many, many children, and they're going to be raised in their banner until they get enough people they can control the nations, and they will become Muslim. It's like a cancer. I've said it before. Muslims are like a cancer. It, it, once you let them in, it grows and grows and grows. In my stack of material today, I have a story, and I thank you for the call. It's a commentary that I printed out this morning, and maybe we'll get to it in the next hour. But it's about how the American left is making common cause with the Islamic world, even though they're so different, making common cause because they have certain goals about destroying the current traditions and government of the United States. Uh, we have a break coming up in just a moment. I hope you can be patient and stick around. We've got some medical things we're talking about with uh, Russell Singleton. 
physician assistant from uh, Trip Family Medicine coming along in just a few minutes. He'll be here until 9 o'clock this morning. Also want to remind you, our friends at High Desert Meat Processing process one animal at a time. What you bring in is what you're going to get back. Darren Van Horn, owner of High Desert Meat Processing, has over 30 years' experience in the meat business, and he's right here in Twin Falls. Visit High Desert Meat Processing on Facebook. You can see the reviews of other customers. You can also give High Desert Meat Processing a telephone call, 734-9949. High Desert Meat does in-house smoking. Nothing gets shipped out. Specialty meats, jerky, pepperoni, salami, summer sausage, kielbasa, breakfast sausage, brats, Polish dogs, hot dogs, and much more. USDA approved. Darren works closely with local beef growers and their programs to ensure quality meat. Telephone number again, 734-9949. It's 8.30, 50 right now at our studio. Warming up quickly today. More coming up on Top Story with Bill Colley as well.